Hello, my name is Trey. Welcome to What Can I Change. Today we're going to be talking about the industry. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't, don't play yourself. Okay, let's get right to it. <clears throat> I want to, you notice that very first one? Watch that again. I don't care if she's 13, this is hot. Which website do you think this is? Y'all know the coloring. You saw the, you saw the thumbnail, you saw it all. What do you think this is? I love how tiny she is and how it looks like it. What? Younger the better, who cares? These are real poor. I hope she didn't get paid for this worthless little B word. All right, let's let them Pornhub talk. user comments. It's impossible to read the words without feeling physically ill, so I won't try. They're connected to the story of a 15 year old girl from Broward County in Florida who went missing for a year. She was found when her distraught mother was tipped off by a Pornhub user that he had seen and recognized her daughter on the website. The girl was found being raped in 58 videos under the account named Daddy Slut. 58 videos. 58. Now, I'm going to say this right now. Okay. I made an uncensored version of this video over on Rumble for you guys who care. Okay. Where I, I go into a little bit more depth on another video. Okay. So if you want to see more there. This video is pretty crazy too, but I made another version of this same video, um, but with diff with I'll show you. Nonetheless, if you want to see that version, or if you want to see both of these videos, go ahead and do that. <clears throat> fifty-eight videos of a fifteen-year-old little girl, right? Fifteen, fifty-eight videos. I am tired of having to say this, but and y'all are reading this here in the background. This these things about individuals who keep saying that this industry is free flowing. The people who sell y'all on this idea of what sex is supposed to be, it's just disgusting. It's an absolute disgust. It's an absolute disgust. Police were able to match the abuser's face to surveillance footage from a 7-Eleven convenience store and identified the 30-year-old man, Christopher Johnson. Tuesday, police arrested Johnson when he and the girl got back into the same... Because there's so many of y'all who always say, you know, let me not say so many, but there's so many people who are just lost and saying, oh, but this is the extreme. It doesn't happen that often. Yes, it does. Like I said, I made a video talking about this very subject where a, a person who works for these companies, I'm sure y'all have heard of MindGeek who changed their name, but nonetheless, they own so many different sites. Hold on, guys. They own so many different sites. I'm telling you, I am telling you, this is not abnormal for this to happen. It is the norm. And you people who talk about the that one website where all the women go who are so, so freely because they now have control over their bodies. <laughs> You're fooling yourself. Car. The girl told detectives many of the porn videos were made at Johnson's apartment. The videos, however, were monetized on Pornhub with ads and were sold as pay to download with a 35% commission going to the company. The girl's life will never be the same. This is, of course, a horrific story, but it is not an uncommon one. There know. are literally thousands of cases of people who have been raped or trafficked or tortured or abuse of minors, including toddlers, which have then been videoed and uploaded onto the website, which has made a tidy profit from the scarring of innocent minds and bodies. Now, you would think that the company, despite being an inherently immoral company, if they had any decency at all and they heard about this kind of thing going on or even suspected it of going on, that they would implement serious measures to flag, report and remove videos like this. After all, it's not like they can't afford to do so. Pornhub is a massive company. It is owned by the parent company ILO, formerly MindGeek, and it receives 115 million visits every single day, not to mention the fact that it has 6 million videos uploaded annually and an estimated value of $1.5 billion. Yet, do you know how many people are employed at Pornhub to review flagged videos? Well, according to the Gazette, it's just one. One. 
Six million videos uploaded a year. You have one person who reviews flagged videos. Can you imagine if YouTube did that? I know some people complain and they're like, man, it feels like there's only one person. But imagine if you had to go into a review on YouTube, you're like, man, this video is disgusting. This person is saying racial stuff and they're just being, they're saying all types of slurs and they're even showing like disgusting content with women in it. And you said, oh, I'm going to flag this video. And there's only one person who looks at it. One person employed five days a week to review 1.5 million hours of footage annually, which leaves us in little wonder as to why they- and Imagine how, if you were the person who had to review this stuff, I mean, your brain would be fried. Having to see the most disgusting stuff, the most disgusting acts done every single day. Your whole life is just looking at videos and trying to say which ones are wrong and what's right. It would screw somebody up. I know that person goes in and is like, I'm not even going to look at another video. I think if I look at one more video, I think I'm going to, you know. They have a backlog of... I want y'all to read this right quick. They likely, this is the person who's really been on this case. Her and her whole team. There's other people as well, but this is what people normally think about when they think about the face of all this. They likely did flag it, but, you know, had only one person to review flags videos. A backlog of 706,000 flag videos in policy where a video was put in line for review. It was flagged over 15 times. All of this ensured victims would remain monetized on the site as long as possible. 706,000 flag videos that have yet to be reviewed. And when this was revealed, the CEO of MindGeek at the time said that this seemed good and reasonable. Now, in spite of their laxity, the company has had help in reviewing videos. There have been literally hundreds of occasions when Pornhub has been contacted by victims saying that there are videos of their abuse on their website. Sometimes even the police have asked that videos be taken. The boy is now suing. Police had sent takedown demands, but Pornhub ignored the police until third demands. Some assault videos stayed on the site for seven months, available to download for 130 million site visitors per day. Franklin was sentenced to 40 years in prison. Prison pictured here are some of the PH video titles along with the photo of Franklin. You can see this stuff on X. Taken down. Has Pornhub obliged? No. Victims have been ignored for months. They've been demanded to prove that the activity was a true rape or abuse situation. And even when the videos have been removed, they have simply been re-uploaded again and again and again. Now, in case you had any doubt about Pornhub's complicity in evil, it was revealed in depositions that Pornhub had knowingly been hiding child sexual abuse from authorities and had not... Let's read this. To expose Pornhub's decade-long failure to uh, report child sex exploitation vid videos to authorities using evidence from a courtroom video, Micklewaite showed the representatives from North America's leading agencies, including the Canada Center for Child Protection, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, confirmed that Pornhub had been knowingly harboring and hiding child great videos from law enforcement, despite being legally obligated to report any contact that exploits minors, Pornhub failed to do this for 10 years. Reported any sexual abuse on their platform for 13 years prior to the Trafficking Hub movement. Just this past- 13 years before Trafficking Hub was even a movement. Last week, undercover footage of a Pornhub employee revealed that they use things such as blurred faces as a loophole. Who exploits? This is the video I made a video on. If y'all want to see this entire video, go to Rumble. I made a whole video on this. It gets quite crazy, but I made a whole video on this particular video. Everybody. Everyone. You make a lot of money. Do you rape this? Use it? Or? Of course. Of course. We've brought it up to the CPO, we brought it up to the CLO, and they're both telling us it's all good. And the CPO is especially telling us, like, fuck off, it's all good. Like, stop. So they know the like, risk. Sh like, shut up. No, it's all good. I'm not gonna get caught. It's fine. So this company knowingly makes as much money as possible from the abuse of children and victims of rape. It seems to be almost an integral part of their business model. Uh, I want to say this, obviously, this video is not going to be monetized. Uh, I'm not going to even try to monetize it because I want to say this, man. 
certain things I talk about when it comes to children. I normally never, I purposely don't monetize these videos, even though sometimes YouTube will give you the limited ad suitability. When I talk about children, I don't monetize any of those videos um, because, or if I think it's a very serious video, I don't monetize them. Um, so that's why I'm allowing some of the words to be said. If you're hearing them, hearing the words like child abuse and exploitation, I'm not trying to be vulgar, but I'm allowing these words to be said because this video is not meant to be monetized. Um, I obviously go into more detail on the video on Rumble, which is a little bit worse than this one. Um, but nonetheless, I want to say this, man. I understand that there are some people who want to play one side of the fence or the other. I get it. Okay. But there's just something that has to be said here. You have to pick a side. When it comes to the porn industry, you got to pick a side. You either are okay with the vast majority of these sites allowing abuse and allowing children, allowing minors, and I'm including OnlyFans in this as well. Okay. If you don't want to believe what I'm saying, that's fine. Okay. It's all cool. Okay. But what I am saying is you cannot say that you are for protecting people, protecting women, protecting children, and then also say, yes, but I'm perfectly fine with the porn industry. Because what you're really saying is you're perfectly fine with everything that's being consented to is what I'm assuming. You're, you're fine with if somebody says, hey, I want to do this, let them do it as an adult. But I just want you to know what you're saying. If you're saying that you're OK with the entire porn industry to say you're OK with the industry, it is such it is so corrupt. It is so money driven for people who are so power hungry. They are ripping children, men, women off the streets to traffic them to make more videos because the demand is so high. He said one hundred and fifty million visits just on Pornhub alone gets one hundred and fifty million visits a day. Think about all the websites that are still out there. There's much more than that. MindGeek owns a ton. Well, they changed their name, but Mind, formerly known MindGeek owns a ton of sites. Sites you never know about, right? Or sites you do, I mean, sites you know about, but you don't know that it's ran by the same people. All I'm asking for you guys is just to open your eyes, listen a little bit. I understand there are people who are porn addicts, okay? I get it. Been there. I was a porn addict for a long time in my life. I understand there are people who are sex addicts. I get it. Addiction is not something I'm just saying, oh, you should just get over it. It is, it is taught to us at a very young age to get into this stuff. Y'all remember the Elsa gate. Y'all remember the stuff they did on YouTube kids to get the kids into sexual things. There are little groups out there that try to get children into pornography. Okay. There are little groups out there that try to get kids into this because they want to rot their minds. They really want kids to get into this because they know if they get children into this, they're going to get more sickos like themselves. There are little people who get out here and do that. So what I'm trying to tell you guys is just. I, I know some of you people. Don't have necessarily bad intentions. You're just trying to say people are adults. Let them do what they want to do. OK, fine. But don't say that you like the porn industry because it's too corrupt too disgusting and it takes way too many innocent people and put them in such crazy situation to say that you can like it just pick a side of the fence if you want to be on the side of the fence that says i'm okay i don't really care if kids are in this if there's women in this if this just this kind of thing okay i mean i, I would consider you an evil individual but okay okay we will always disagree for the rest of our lives you'll be on the evil side of history in my opinion but people who want to play the fence because of the one website that came out, what we formerly knew, knew as webcam girls, we now know as OF. And since that has come out, since OF has come out, people think that, oh, we're cleaning up the industry. No, you're not. Because there is plenty of stories that have come out about OF that talks about how there are still young minors in there, how they have the exact same issues of people being uh, abused and all this stuff in this content. All I'm saying is just take a look at it. At least just try to learn. Stop assuming that every time you see another uh, Fansly pop up, another OF pop up, another webcam service pop up, that every time you see one of those, every woman in there and every guy in there is consenting because sex is so wonderful. I would rather, and I'm going to say this honestly, 
I would rather you assume the worst than assume anything close to the best case scenario that you think it is. Always assume the worst because it is way more likely that the person you're seeing on a webcam or you're seeing on a subscription service or you're seeing in uh, free videos that you can find on any of these websites. Assume that the vast majority of these people are not wanting to do this. It's uploaded without their consent and they're begging to have it taken down or their lives have been ruined by making this one video because they had met this one guy who said that, hey, I can love on you. And then, bam, their video is up for the rest of the world to see for the rest of their lives. It'll never disappear. Understand that. These women and these men can't escape this. We see what happened in everybody's life. When you put up a video like this, even if it's to get your consent, you made a mistake one night and it does happen. It's over. And I'm sorry that these women for the rest of their lives and these men for the rest of their lives, they're going to have to see their naked bodies on screen doing something they never had planned to do. And even more disgusting is when it's somebody who said, no, please don't do this to me. Please leave me alone. I don't want to do this anymore. Can you just let me go? 58 videos later, you finally get to escape your captor. After you, there's 58 videos of you up being tortured, pretty much. For everybody to get down in the comments and say, man, she's so hot. She's so beautiful. I like how small she is. I like this. I like that. Not knowing, not for one second, that this woman was thrown into a hotel room and mercilessly taken advantage of. But as long as you get your rocks off, right? It's a sick world. You got a choice to make. Go get help if you're an addict. And if you don't consider yourself an addict, And you've got to make a decision. Either you tell yourself, or you look yourself in the mirror every day and say, I'm perfectly okay with this industry. Or you start taking steps to get yourself rid of this. It's a disgusting industry and it always will be.